Region 8 News starts right now. We've had a full day of sunshine across Region 8, but it looks like more rain could be coming in over the weekend. Zach Holder joins us now with a first look at your forecast. Zach? St. Bernard's kicked off this year's Get In Gear series this morning with a Healthy Heart 2 Mile. The series offers health education events throughout the year and gives participants a fun way to find a healthy lifestyle. Community members of all ages brave the cold for the event. The two mile walk or run focused on the importance of cardiac rehab. So many of us are affected by heart disease and rehab is a lifestyle approach. It really addresses nutrition, education and exercise to get you back, to get you healthy and for you to have a long healthy life. The next event in the Get In Gear series will be a triathlon next month. If you're interested in learning more about this series or getting involved, you can find the information on our website. A former school in North Little Rock is left completely trashed and badly damaged just as one man was hoping to renovate it. That man wanted to take the old school and open it back up as an adult daycare and GED testing site. Tyler Thomason shows us how vandals have forced him to delay this project. With each step, he dodges debris. They hit every corner. Andrew Rogers surveys the damage. Rogers did file a police report. He says he believes whoever did this left behind anywhere from fifty to $75,000 in damage. And a woman was arrested on charges of using a box cutter to attack two women as they attended a family funeral. Tara Horton of Little Rock is facing two counts of second degree battery. Records show police responding to the church to find people fighting. Horton was then taken into custody at Pulaski County Jail but by the next day was no longer listed on the Pulaski County Jail roster. Cooper Tire and Rubber Company workers at the plant in Arkansas have agreed to a four-year contract. Cooper Tire says the deal covers more than 1,400 United Steelworkers Union members at the unit in Texarkana. Terms in the contract were not released. The agreement with United Steelworkers Local 752L was announced Wednesday. Cooper Tire is based in Finlay, Ohio. And a Virginia delegate announced Friday night that he plans to introduce articles of impeachment against Virginia's lieutenant governor if he does not resign due to the accusations of sexual assault. The articles of impeachment against Justin Fairfax will be given Monday if he does not resign before then. Fairfax quickly denied the allegations. Article 4, Section 17 of the Constitution of Virginia says very clearly that impeachment shall be for a high crime or misdemeanor. There's no question that violent sexual assault clearly qualifies as a high crime. Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax denies all allegations and says the encounter, which occurred before he was married, was consensual. In northern India, police say 39 people are dead and another 27 are sick from drinking liquor containing toxic methanol. Police say the victims consumed liquor during a customary feast. Eight suspected bootleggers have been arrested, while the provisional governor has suspended 35 officials, including 12 police. Death from illegally brewed alcohol are common in India. Illicit liquor is cheap and often spiked with chemicals like pesticides to increase potency. In Craighead County, a woman is behind bars accused of trying to kidnap two juveniles from a public area. Melanie Carter of Mark Tree was arrested yesterday after two incidents in Jonesboro. According to JPD, she grabbed the juveniles by the arm as if to lead them away. Luckily, the mothers of the children stepped in and stopped her. Carter is currently being held in the Craighead County Detention Center on a $1 million bond. Arkansas State continued celebrating Black History Month this morning by holding the inaugural Living Legends Breakfast. It's a Black History Month initiative that was created to honor living Arkansas State graduates who have excelled in their careers and their communities. Committee members said the event was a great way to allow students to connect with alumni and also give them a way to make Black History Month feel a little more personal. We honor so many people during Black History Month who have passed on that we don't get to meet. And now we have people who are living right now who have become legends in their own time. And we get to honor them and we get to meet them and network with them. Five people from all generations were awarded at today's event, including Arkansas State Hall of Fame athlete Dr. Thomas Hill and Rep Representative Jamie Scott, the youngest African-American woman elected to the Arkansas House of Representatives. In Greene County, a fatal crash left two people dead and one injured yesterday. One vehicle was headed westbound on Highway 34 and another was southbound on Highway 141. The driver on Highway 34 failed to stop at a stop sign and traveled into the path of the other vehicle. Ivan Puelo and Alexandria Snyder died in the crash. Regina Cox survived with injuries. One local VFW post has cooked up a fun way to raise money for our veterans. VFW Post 2242 has started holding monthly pancake breakfasts at their meeting hall in Paragold. 
The food is all you can eat for just $6. They serve eggs, bacon, sausage, and of course pancakes. All of the money raised goes directly to local veterans and can be used however it is needed to help. We help veterans in need if they need help with their electric bill, rent, whatever we help them. Also we do events in the community. This is the third breakfast fundraiser the Post has held and so far they've raised several hundred dollars. If you missed it this weekend, they plan to have a breakfast every second Saturday from 7 to 11 a.m. Looking ahead, Arkansas State University is preparing for a presidential visit. Former President Bill Clinton will be in Jonesboro on Monday. Clinton will be the featured speaker at the Riceland Hall and the Fowler Center on the A-State campus at 530. The event is part of the Riceland Distinguished Presentation Series. And a vape pen is being blamed for killing a man outside of Dallas, Texas. His death, now the second in the U.S., attributed to malfunctioning e-cigarettes. Last week, 24-year-old William Brown was sitting in his car when his e-cig exploded and cut a major artery in his neck. While fatal e-cig incidents are rare, explosions are not. In two years, U.S. US hospitals rather, reported more than 2,000 injuries from vaping. The problem centered around lithium-ion batteries that power the devices, which the FDA says can overheat, especially when the wrong charger is used. And we're taking a live look now at our Jonesboro Skycam. It's been a beautiful but cold day outside. Coming up, Zach Holder will have a look at what could be an extremely wet forecast ahead. I think people from town like it because it gives them a feeling of, of a college town. And then people from campus or students like it because it, get, it creates a, a college memory for them. And I think a lot of memories that we have of college are times we spent talking and conversing with friends at, at a gathering place. For the last 18 years, the Edge Coffee House in Jonesboro has been a local staple. I think it's very important and I always try in everything I do and everything I purchase, buy local as much as possible. Anne's favorite part of owning her coffee house? The memories made there along the way. I, I had some good memories as far as people that have uh, come up to me, in fact, someone recently did and said this is where he proposed to his wife. And, and I also support other coffee houses because I feel like the more the merrier, that you can have many that prosper. Um, and, and so I encourage others, um, you know, that go into the coffee house business because um, you create then a, a coffee house culture like they have in Seattle where people get into the idea of meeting up someplace and having meaningful conversations with their friends. Mm -hmm. Ann Williams has created a place that the community can make lifelong memories one cup of coffee at a time. At the Edge in Jonesboro, I'm Denton Postal 8.